So welcome to the second part of lecture 34. Uh, so I want to take a little bit of a brief digression to talk a little bit about uh, complex eigenvectors, okay, and how uh, sometimes when you're dealing with a uh, two by two case or even in a regular n by n matrix, how eigenvalues and eigenvectors, once you have one, you can actually get another one for free. And so just remember last class we talked about the conjugate of a complex number. So the conjugate of a complex number is the new complex number you get by changing the sign of the imaginary part. So if this had been uh, plus two, this would become minus two. If this had been minus three, this would have been plus three. So you're just changing the sign of the number in front of the imaginary number. And so here is a kind of a very useful fact when you're dealing with these computations. Let's say you have an n by n real matrix. So all the entries in A is real. And you have an eigenvalue of A with its eigenvector. And you can assume that they're complex uh, eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Then once you, you can figure that out, you actually know that the conjugate of the original eigenvalue is still an eigenvalue of A, and its corresponding eigenvector is the vector that you get by taking the conjugate of each entry of the original eigenvector. Now the proof is pretty straightforward, so let me do that. So we're given this information. The x and the lambda satisfy this condition right here. So what this means is that if I take the conjugate of both sides, they're the same thing, okay? Because they're the same numbers, if I take the conjugate, or the same vectors, if I take the conjugate on both sides, I get the same thing. But now using the properties of the conjugate, this is the same thing as the matrix A taking its conjugate and the vector X and taking its conjugate. And over here, this is the same thing as taking the conjugate of lambda minus times the conjugate of the vector x. Okay, so let's look at this part right here. Right here, and we're gonna simplify it. So what we now have is that since a is real, not, not since a is a, since a is real, the conjugate of A is just A. There are no complex numbers inside of A. So when you take the conjugate of it, you just get back the matrix itself. So if we look at this red underlined part, what this reduces to is A times the conjugate of X is equal to the conjugate of lambda times the conjugate of X. Right? And this expression right here is just telling me that the conjugate of lambda is an eigenvalue with eigenvector, the conjugate of the vector x. Okay, and so this is great when you're do using. Uh, uh, sorry, it, this is great when you come across a matrix with complex eigenvalues, and because if you can find one eigenvalue in its eigenvector just by taking its conjugate, you get the second one for free. Okay, so let me just give you an example of that. So let's say you want to find the eigenvectors of this matrix. So this is actually the matrix from the first part, and we already computed the eigenvalues of this matrix, which are i and negative i. And now what we want to do is we want to find an eigenvector uh, for both of these uh, both of these eigenvalues. Now I'm doing the first one. Okay, so I'll do the first one. And what you're going to do is just, the procedure is exactly the same. You're going to row reduce things. Now, what I'm going to notice is if I multiply the bottom row by negative i, uh, then I and add it to the top row, I'm going to get zero. So I could actually end up with, well, not equals, this is row equivalent to one, negative i, zero, zero. So this tells me x2 is free. And then it also tells me that x1 minus x2i is equal to zero, which is the same thing as saying that x1 is equal to i x2. So doing our usual uh, trick here, we have that uh, one eigenvalue is going to be v equaling to um, i x2, oops, not, that's not a vector, it's just a number, x2 
and it's not one, our eigenvalues. Our eigenvalue is, oh, so excuse me about that, i x2, x2, we can factor out x2 and we get i1. Okay, so what we have is an eigenvalue, uh, eigenvector of lambda equals to i is the vector v, which is i1. Okay, and now let's say we wanted to find out uh, the other eigenvector uh, corresponding to lambda equals negative i. So first of all, notice that the conjugate of i is negative i. So the theorem says, it, since we know an eigenvalue and its corresponding eigenvector, when we take the conjugate of the eigenvalue, we, we can figure out its eigenvector just by taking the conjugate of everything uh, for the first vector. So what we have is by the theorem, if we take v and take its conjugate, Right, so we have to take the conjugate of everything inside of here, and that is equal to negative i1 is the eigenvector is the eigenvector of lambda equals negative one. So we didn't have to do any work, we just had to take the conjugate of each of the entries. And just to kind of reinforce this here, here's another example, uh, which we'll, we'll use later on. We have a two by two matrix, and I've already done the work, and I've figured out one eigenvalue is two plus i with its eigenvector. Maybe I should actually write that in there, not vector, but just its eigenvector is two, uh, negative one minus i. So this implies that lambda two minus i is an eigenvalue with eigenvector two minus one plus i. So we're just taking the conjugate of everything inside of the vector. So it's a very handy fact here, this little fact that I have. I could have called it a theorem when I actually proved it. And it kind of sometimes helps us when we're doing some calculations involving eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So we're going to pause here and then kind of dive deeper into what's happening into the two by two case of matrices.